No one's done this yet. I'm actually kind of surprised. I mean, the idea for this is just so obvious. I'm sure someone would do it eventually. Wow, uh, so no one has made this yet. As far as I know, no one is in the process of making this, and I think I'm the only person who wants this. So I guess I'll just do it myself. <clears throat> this is Shadow. Shadow likes to use weapons and drive vehicles. While these cool additions are definitely helpful, are they required for this adventure? Does the ultimate life form need unnecessary junk in order for him to complete his own game? Is it possible to beat Shadow the Hedgehog without weapons and vehicles? Well, let's find out. Before we start, let me point out I'm using the PS2 version of this game, so I'll be using that kind of analogy for the entire video. Now, we could argue all day about what is considered a weapon and a vehicle in this game, so to keep this intro from being 5 minutes long, a weapon is anything surrounded by this green aura. So machine guns, swords, trees, this freaking monstrosity, basically anything listed on the wiki. If for some reason Shadow is holding something in his hands, he will not use that held item to inflict damage onto an enemy. And something will be classified as a vehicle if 1. we need to press circle in order to use it, and 2. we can control our movements with the analog stick. So motorcycles, hovercrafts, jump vehicles, and even the Black Hawks. Yes, I know Black Hawks are organic life forms, but they pretty much act like aircrafts. However, things like the rocket or the balloons are totally okay, since they don't fit into both the criteria. In case you couldn't tell, I'm not using the weapons and vehicles primarily associated with Shadow, so things that would appear in your average Sonic Adventure would most likely be allowed for this challenge, like the previously mentioned rocket and balloon. And just for fun, I'll also be adding two extra rules to the challenge, the first of which being about throwing objects. Shadow can pick up certain objects, and if he throws it at an enemy, it will deal damage. So for this run, picking up and throwing objects are allowed as long as we don't throw anything into an enemy or other objects. I figured this would be okay since we really aren't using it as a weapon when we throw something on the ground beside us. But why would we even do this in the first place, you might ask? Well, some objects like these crates can't be broken with a simple punch. However, throwing the same crate would be enough to destroy it. Sometimes they may even reveal an item box, but the main reason we'll be doing this is to fill up one of the two gauges. I'll go into those later in the video. Also, in case it wasn't obvious enough, the bombs we would normally use to make holes in the wall, well, would not be used to make holes in the wall, so we need to get creative on how we would get past those parts. There are also some objects we can turn over. To make it brief, we must get rid of everything around the object before we flip them. The second extra rule is about items that can heal the enemy. There are two things in this game that can do that, the heal cannon and the healing pod. To make a long story short, we will not be using the heal cannon, because it functions just like a grenade launcher. However, I will be allowing the healing pod. Even though it works just like a bomb, I, I don't know, it just feels natural to use. Like, I could see other characters in the Sonic universe using this to help out a fallen soldier, but I don't see the same Sonic characters aiming a firearm to give someone their medicine. Like, you know? Anyway, those are all the rules. That's how I will be tackling this game. If you don't like my rules, too bad, it's my video. But if you want, you can try out your own version of this challenge. I'd be very interested in seeing how you would go about this. The goal of this run is to complete all 10 endings and defeat the true final boss. Okay, everything is laid out, let's begin with Westopolis. The opening level doesn't pose any sort of problems to us, even with the restrictions. Defeating the gun soldiers for Black Doom, heading to the Gold Ring, and killing all the Black Arms with Sonic is incredibly easy. Honestly, I could say the same thing about Glyphic Canyon. Activating the jewels, finding the Gold Ring, and again, killing all the aliens were no trouble at all. Digital Circuit is next. This time for the hero mission, all we need to do is make it to the goal ring. The dark mission requires us to destroy the motherboard, which lies a little farther beyond. Oddly enough, we can actually stand directly underneath the motherboard, which I didn't even know that was possible. So all we need to do is punch it repeatedly until it blows up. Up next is Lethal Highway. Black Doom urges us to escape from the city. In other words, just get to the goal ring. The hero mission, however, is a whole different story. Sonic wants us to destroy this heavily armored tank. Without the use of weapons, we really only have two consistent ways of dealing damage to it. The homing attack, which works whenever it feels like it, and Chaos Blast. We get Chaos Blast by filling up the dark gauge in the top left corner. If we do something evil like destroying property or killing the good guys, that gauge will fill up, and once it's completely full, Shadow will temporarily become Dark Shadow. That is what the wiki calls it, so sure, why not, that's what I'll call it. 
During this state, Shadow is granted invulnerability and the ability to use Chaos Blast. He also gets unlimited ammo, but I mean, like, come on, we don't care about that, it's useless. When Shadow uses Chaos Blast, he will unleash a huge burst of energy that will do massive damage to his surroundings. So using this to hit harder should help out, right? Well, even after filling up the meter twice and unleashing the Force of a Thousand Gods, the tank doesn't look any different than when we first started attacking it. I've tried this mission multiple times, and every single attempt yielded the same result. Damn, they got away. Making this the first mission we can't complete. Now's a good time to point out that even though we can't do every single mission, the question of if we can beat the game without weapons and vehicles is still on the table. Since the story mode has branching pathways, it is possible to reach all of the endings if we take specific routes. After this level, we have our first boss battle with Black Bull. All we need to do is wait for his minions to spawn so we can use the homing attack to reach his eye. Rinse and repeat until he's defeated. Up next is Cryptic Castle. Not too far into the level, we run into a little problem. These lanterns need to be lit up in order for us to move forward. The game wants us to use these torches, but those are considered weapons, so I started thinking of different ways to proceed onwards. I thought to myself, Chaos Blast seems pretty hot. That might work. Chaos Blast! Eh, worth a shot. I decided to grind up to a higher platform and try to spin dash jump to the other side, but we would always fall short. Maybe jumping from this balloon might be able to do it. Holding X will cause us to hit the bottom of the balloon, preventing us from gaining any height. We can turn the balloons, and if we jump just as we're going from one side to the other, we're able to launch ourselves much closer, but it's still not enough. I remember in Sonic Hero, Sonic has a way of launching himself upwards by using his spin dash on a slanted angle. Does Shadow have anything like this? Um, uh, kinda. If Shadow jumps into a 90 degree angle, he will sort of bounce off the corner. Hitting the corner at just the right spot while going fast enough will launch him upwards. Luckily, we can do this on the two lanterns. Start next to the second set of torches, charge up and release a spin dash, jump and just hope that it works. After about 40 minutes of trying, we hit it just right and we barely grab the ledge. Right after that, we find Eggman. He wants us to light up his giant lanterns, but we can't do that without the torches, so the dark mission is completely undoable. What makes this even worse is that we need to light up the lantern in order to spawn a spring balloon, so now we must find a different way to move forwards. I tried spin dash jumping, but we were a little low, so I did it again on the side where the ground was more elevated. We were definitely closer, but we're still not high enough. And from my practice, it doesn't seem like we can bounce too high off the corners either. And when thinking about how to get higher, I got this crazy idea. What if we climbed to the top of this jack-o'-lantern shaped structure? I flung Shadow upwards and managed to get up to the nose, then I tried aiming for the eyes, but an invisible wall is blocking the way for some reason. Well, darn it. The only other solution I could think of was Chaos Control. The meter in the top right corner is called the Hero Gauge. It works like the Dark Gauge, only we fill it up by doing something heroic, like killing the bad guys or putting out a fire. Once completely filled, Shadow will become Hero Shadow. During this brief period, Shadow is once again granted infinite ammo and invincibility, but instead of Chaos Blast, we now perform Chaos Control. This ability allows us to literally fly across sections of the level, so we could use this to skip over the part we're stuck on, but after looking around the small portion of the level we have access to, I quickly realize we don't nearly have enough things to fill up the Hero Gauge. Since we can't continue onward, we unfortunately can't beat any missions in Cryptic Castle. But let's still try out the fight with the Egg Breaker. For some reason, if we remain above Eggman by using the homing attack, he will never fight back. In fact, he hardly moves from where he's standing. So, not bad at all. Prison Island. A large majority of this level has us navigating a toxic river. We could steal those hoverboards the aliens are using, but they look like they're having such a fun time riding their little devices. I don't think we should bother them. Instead, let's jump headfirst into the river and damage boost our way across. Interestingly, in this game, Shadow will only lose 10 rings whenever he takes damage, so we don't need to worry about dying too often. Plus, the rings don't sink into the acid, which is very helpful if we ever run low. And with that said, we can do all of the missions, although it is a little tedious stopping every few seconds. Circus Park. There's nothing to say about the dark and neutral missions, both of them are pretty easy. The hero mission is to collect 400 rings, which was a bit peculiar to me. The main way we gain rings is by playing Eggman's shooting gallery. The more we shoot, the more rings we win. We can still participate without weapons, and Shadow's normal attacks can pop the balloons. 
but don't expect to do too well in this. The most I could get was like five. But even with no help from the carnival games, there were still more than enough rings to collect. That's why I find this mission so peculiar. Many of the rings were just lying on the pathway, plus there were a few minor things we could do to cash in on that dough. Again, dropping only 10 rings when getting hit really helped out for this one. Now we head to Central City. For the hero mission, Knuckles wants us to get rid of 20 bombs, but the only way we can do that is by using a special kind of gun. That's no good. For the dark mission, we need to activate five bigger bombs. Getting to the first two is kinda tricky. Normally we'd throw the explosive at this part of the building to open up the passageway. Actually, the explosive is so close to the building we can just punch it and the wall crumbles. That kinda feels like cheating though, so I tried to find another way around this. I filled up the dark gauge, ran back, threw the explosive aside, and... Not to worry, chaos control is still an option. Usually whenever we use it, it would take us farther into the level. However, doing it in this specific spot actually sends us in the opposite direction we'd normally go. Wait until the gauge depletes more than halfway, press triangle, and we should appear right next to the second bomb. Destroy it, then backtrack to the first one. Right after the fourth bomb, there is another section where a wall needs to be blown up with explosions. So fill up the hero gauge a second time, chaos control, and find the last bomb. The Doom. Shortly after the first checkpoint, we have yet another wall that can only be opened with explosives, and Chaos Blast doesn't work again. Fill up the hero gauge to use Chaos Control. Once again, after the third checkpoint, there's another wall. I think we all know what to do here. That's right, Chaos Control! After that, we can play the rest of the level as normal. Obliterating gun, finding the goring, and saving the scientist can all be completed. After this level, we have a boss battle with the Egghawk, I mean, um, Heavy Dog. I I'm sorry, I don't know what caused me to say that. Anyway, Heavy Hawk causes no problems. I, <laughs> I put Heavy Hawk in the script, okay? Sky Troops. Black Doom wants us to shoot down Eggman's battleships, and considering there's no logical way of reaching them without turrets, it's safe to say we can't do the Dark mission. Aside from that, the only thing to look out for is this stormy section. We would normally ride the Black Hawks, but nothing that little Chaos Control can't do. Um... Um, I said nothing that a little chaos control can't do. Alright, um, let's... what if... Aha! So, if we move far enough out, we're able to use chaos control. And just to point out, even though the hero gauge is now empty, the game will not stop chaos control while we're above a death plane. Destroying the last jewel and reaching the goal ring are thankfully no problem. Up next, we have Mad Matrix. Scattered around the level are groups of colored tiles. Step on top of the tile to change their color, and if all the colors match, the passage will open. If Shadow remains too close to the tile we just changed, we will not be able to change it again until we move far enough away from it. Right after the first checkpoint, we find these two tiles floating in the air. It seems scary at first, but we can jump right in front of one of them, activate it, and quickly homing attack back to where we jumped. Don't worry about falling, we should land on the ground below us. With that being done, we can now blow up the bombs for Black Doom and find the goal ring in the red terminal. The hero mission... oh boy, the hero mission. For the hero mission, we need to extract data from four terminals. The level starts with the blue terminal, where we easily escape, red has a bunch of floating blocks, and yellow has the colored tiles. Green is the only one that causes trouble for us. Halfway through, we get to this part where we need to ride this narrow moving platform, and in front of us are two more colored tiles. We need to hit one of the tiles twice if we want the barrier to open. Going into this, I didn't really have any kind of strategy. I sort of just jumped and kind of hoped it worked. So after about a dozen failed attempts, I tried thinking of an alternate and hopefully easier way to get past this. I noticed Espio right beside us, and that gave me an idea. In single player, plugging in the second controller will allow player two to control the partner. My plan is to have Espio jump into the tile before me, so I only need to hit it once. As I quickly realized, the partners can't change the color of the tiles at all. We could try using Chaos Control, but there aren't enough things in this level to fill up the Hero Gauge. Actually, no, there's something that can fill up the Hero Gauge completely. This blue orb found near the blue terminal. All we need to do is hurry back to a checkpoint and transport Shadow to the green terminal before it depletes. However, we can't make it to any of the checkpoints fast enough. Chaos Blast? Yeah, I thought so. Without any other ideas, the only thing we can do is go back to the original method and try to make it work. Eventually, I came up with a plan. I thought about jumping a little farther back to give myself some more time to react, 
change the color, quickly turn around and use the homing attack back onto the platform, and jump again to change the color a second time to open up the barrier. This actually seemed to be working. A few times I not only had enough time to hit the tile twice, but also had enough momentum to propel us forward. But despite all of that, the barrier is opening too dang slowly. I almost thought it was impossible to make this jump. And then that single gear in my head started turning and I remembered something. If Shadow isn't holding anything while attacking in the air, he will sort of kick his legs around his body. As we can see, this move will stop Shadow from falling for a short period of time. If we do that after the second jump, we will stay in the air just long enough for the barrier to completely vanish, allowing us to move on to the next section. Now we need to do the exact same thing again, the only difference being the two tiles are now one on top of the other. And this one proved to be even worse than the first one. When doing the bottom tile, we can't seem to move far enough away to register a second hit. We can clear the path if we're doing the top tile, but we have the same trouble with the barrier. We need to jump farther back, so I thought about getting a running start. Building up speed is quite challenging on this thing. We can't keep a steady pace because going in a circle is impossible, and the slants almost completely halt our movements. There's got to be an easier way to gain speed from where we're at, but how? And then it hit me! Spin dashing! Line up Shadow in the middle and place him as far back as he can go. After Espio says, Obstacle incoming. If we don't get rid of it, it's going to knock us off. Count to two Mississippis, charge up a medium-powered spin dash, release it, and quickly jump. Touch the tile, turn around to homing attack back onto the platform, jump again, touch the tile a second time, land back onto the platform, jump a third time, wait for the barrier to completely disappear, and finally homing attack back onto the platform. And we need to do this a third time right after that. Luckily, we only need to hit the middle tile once, and I managed to do that on my first try. Finally, after like two weeks, we complete the hero mission. Yes, I said two weeks. Hey, remember when I said I was using the PS2 version of this game? I wasn't talking about emulating. I'm using legitimate hardware for this. Meaning this entire thing is being done without save states. So every five or six deaths took me back to the beginning of the level, where it took me an extra two minutes just to get back to the spot I needed to be. So, um, this one, this one took a little longer than it should've. If you could like and share this video with the two million people you know, that would be awesome. That would be poggers, thanks. <laughs> poggers. After this level, it's a rematch with the Egg Breaker. Nothing is different, moving on. Death Ruins. After the seventh checkpoint, there's a stone door that can only be broken with a strong attack. For the first time ever, Chaos Blast is actually the answer. We can also break it down by jumping into it with this orange shield. We can find the shield underneath a nearby panel. After the first door, until we see the second door, where we again use Chaos Blast or the shield. Then get to the goal ring and defeat the Black Arms. Before leaving Death Ruins, we have a rematch with Black Bull. It's a little more irritating than the first time we fought him. We can only hit him with three homing attacks at a time, plus this heat wave attack is super annoying to deal with. Once he's at half health, he'll charge towards us once we get near him. This can easily be countered by using the homing attack before he hits us. Black Bull is no longer a problem. Next up, the Ark. Shadow, the promised time is near. Yeah, there's no way we can do this. I tried to see if we could at least reach the Trail of Rings over there, but... No. No. The boss of this level is Blue Falcom. Falcom? That's not right, Spotify. Alright, but real talk, I've never noticed this before doing this challenge, but this is literally just the heavy dog fights, only now it flies. So yeah, we got this. Air Fleet. In the Dark Mission, Black Doom orders us to... Yeah, that's probably the best way to put it. I could barely do this mission with the guns, doing it without them is impossible. In fact, I don't think we can even reach it with a normal attack, it's just way too high to hit. Only Chaos Blast can damage it, and that goes as well as you'd expect. Aside from that, the neutral and hero missions are incredibly simple. And now we head to Iron Jungle. The hero mission has us destroy Eggman's blimp. It's usually so far out that not even Chaos Blast can reach it, and the moments it is close by, we will take damage if we touch it. Sorry, Omega. Reaching the Goring and destroying Gun are totally doable. I'd also recommend skipping over the Shadow Android sections by spin dashing over the boost pads and directly grabbing the pulley. Trust me, defeating Shadow Androids without weapons is painfully slow. The boss of this level is yet another rematch with the Egg Breaker. This time it's actually kind of interesting. 
I tried using the rocket to blast over to Eggman, but for some odd reason, there's an invisible wall preventing us from doing that. So with no real way of getting close to him, our only method of dealing damage to him is by using Chaos Blast. Upon first glance, it seems that everything we do will only fill up the Hero Gauge. However, there is one single thing in this entire arena that is able to fill up the Dark Gauge. That being, destroying the turret. Which is a lot easier said than done. It will only fill up if we deal the finishing blow. If the enemies destroy it, it will not count. And considering we have explosions and lasers happening everywhere, there's a pretty good chance the enemies will destroy it first. So I came up with a little plan to make this all a little more bearable. First, get rid of all the enemies. Three of the egg ponds will respawn indefinitely, while the other robots will not. Then, find the turret we want to destroy. There are two to choose from, one with an egg pond close by the turret, and another one on the opposite side with two egg ponds farther out. I would only bother destroying the second turret, mainly because if we're destroying the first turret, the first egg pond will shoot rockets at us, potentially dealing damage to us and the turret. There's less things to deal with when we're destroying the second turret, because the two robots are too far away to notice us. Actually, I'm looking back at the footage, and I just realized that they are firing at us, but the shots don't come anywhere close to where we're at. So basically, the only thing we need to worry about is Eggman's lasers. Next, have Eggman attack the turret once. If he attacks it twice, the turret will break. After Eggman's first attack, wait until the laser hits the ground, then punch the turret. For some reason, the turrets in this game have a lot of invincibility frames after they take damage. So if the timing was correct, the laser will completely bypass the turret, allowing us to dodge and punch it again. Continue this until the turret is destroyed. To make the turrets respawn, we must run to the opposite side where the other turret would be and touch the back wall. Once we come back, there should be a brand new turret. Now keep repeating this process until the meter is completely filled. Death to all who oppose me. You gotta be kidding me. Oh my god. Eventually, and I do mean eventually, after filling up the Dark Age three times, just enough damage can be dealt to trigger the second phase of the fight, in which Eggman will come down to our level where we can properly attack him. Then we use the same strategy we used in the previous two fights and easily take him down. I'm probably like the only person in existence who actually got Chaos Blast in this fight. Also, 82 minutes! I could have watched the entire Chicken Little movie during that time. Can you see all of me? Space Gadget. We can complete the hero and neutral missions as we normally do. Destroying the Ark's defense systems in the Dark mission looks a little intimidating, especially since the first two are floating above bottomless pits. Then I quickly realized we're actually able to chain homing attacks on the defense systems, so we don't need to worry about falling. After the outer shell is destroyed, it takes five more hits before the inner shell explodes. Once the last system is destroyed, we can move on to Lost Impact. We can't progress through the level because we need to use the turrets in order to advance, and there aren't enough chaos experiments to fill up the hero gauge. This level gives me migraines, moving on. Gun Fortress. Right after the second checkpoint, there's a small area where we need to destroy some gun mechs in order to use a zipline. Normally, we would shoot them down with the turrets. Instead, if we track down every alien up to that point, we would just barely have enough to use chaos control. Aside from that, the hero mission is as simple as getting to the goal ring. For the dark mission, we need to destroy three cores, but all of them are in elevated areas, and the only way to reach them is by using chaos blasts. The first one isn't so bad, since the meter is filling up faster than it's depleting. The second and third one require some patience, because we lose all of our energy before we destroy them. Thankfully, there are many enemies that respawn around both the cores, so refilling shouldn't be an issue. Now we head to Black Comet, where we can't even get past the first obstacle. I try performing the lightspeed dash on the rings, but they're just too far apart for it to work properly. And when doing a well-timed spin dash jump, we are able to connect the homing attack on the worm creatures, but we're unable to make it to the platform beside it. Lava Shelter. Let me just say, this is like taking candy from a baby. I, I'm sorry, that's like the best thing I could say about this one. This is shockingly easy for a final level. Which is fine by me. Now we're at Cosmic Fall. Getting to the goal ring for the Dark Mission was no trouble at all. Finding the computer room was a little more complicated. After the seventh checkpoint, the game wants us to use this jump vehicle to proceed through the level. So instead, let's just chaos control. There's no enemies near that checkpoint, so filling up the hero gauge right before won't work. What I did was this. 
After the first checkpoint, leave the first batch of enemies alive and fill up the hero gauge until there's just barely a sliver left to fill. Then get to the seventh checkpoint and use it to transport back to the first checkpoint. Return to the group of enemies we skipped over, take out the first one so that it completely fills up the meter, and quickly homing attack back to the floating platform. Then hurry back to the first checkpoint, transport back to the seventh checkpoint, and... Just watch this. Chaos Control! Yes, that was almost 20 seconds of flying with chaos control. I, I, my jaw dropped when I first saw that. And finally, Final Haunt. Of course we saved the best main level for last. This level is mainly knowing about when to fill up the hero gauge and how much to fill it up before getting to a certain area. Now granted, we have done this in previous levels, but Final Haunt has such a huge emphasis on this. Chaos control needs to be done at least three to four times in both the missions. I'll start by explaining how to complete the hero mission. By the time we reach the second checkpoint, the hero gauge should be about three-fourths of the way full. Walls like this can be pulled out and then act as platforms, but it can only be pulled out if we have a vacuum gun. So for this first one, simply spin dash jump over to the other side. When we get to this part here, the game wants us to again use the vacuum gun, but we don't need it. Kill the aliens until the hero gauge is filled up, then use chaos control. Again, fill up the meter about three-fourths of the way before arriving to the fourth checkpoint. Then defeat the enemies until chaos control. Another section has more movable walls, this time covered with lasers. So fill up the hero gauge, get close to it, then chaos control one last time. Then reach the goal ring to complete the mission. Now for the dark mission. Get to the second checkpoint and fill up the gauge until there's barely any left to fill. Spin dash jump and instead of going the same route we took for the hero mission, hit this defense unit to open up this new path with the Black Hawk. Defeating it should fill up the hero gauge completely. Spin dash jump off the ledge, then chaos control. Make sure to be far enough out, otherwise we will fly into the hero path where we will ultimately trap ourselves. Once Chaos Control ends, fill up the hero meter again until it has just enough for the next Black Hawk to fill up. After the second Chaos Control, we seem to be trapped in this small area. Normally the door would open if we activate some switches, but that can only be done if we rode the Black Hawk. Surprisingly, we can actually hit one of them. So fill up the hero gauge again to use Chaos Control. Then leave a sliver for the third Black Hawk, and then we make our way to the final defense unit. Now depending on which final level we play and which mission we complete will determine which of the three final bosses we will fight. Sonic and Diablon, Black Doom, or the Egg Dealer. Yes, out of the ten final bosses, we can only fight the same three, and they will fight the same exact way no matter where we're at. But they will still count as different acts, so we need to defeat each of them three different times. Well, technically for Eggman it's four, since he's the boss of both the missions of Lava Shelter. The game counts this as the same act because it's the same boss in the same level, even though they both give us two different endings. I don't know, let's just try not to think about it. Sonic and Diablon was slow and boring, but definitely doable. That took me two and a half minutes and gave me an A rank? I find that so hard to believe. Black Doom was pretty much the same and can still be done, and the Egg Dealer doesn't even feature any weapons. And with that, all ten final bosses are beaten, but you know we're not finished yet. Once we complete all ten endings, we unlock the last story, which grants us one additional level and the true final boss. The last way is just like Final Haunt, in the sense that it has the same level theme, it has some of the same level design, and there is an over-reliance of using Chaos Control. The main difference is now we have a ten minute time limit. Just like in Final Haunt, fill up the hero gauge enough so that defeating the first Black Hawk fills it up completely, then chaos control across the chasm. Now as we move through the level, fill up the hero gauge most of the way by defeating the weaker enemies. They take the least amount of time to kill. Once we reach a dead end, fill it up completely, then chaos control. Again, defeat the weaker enemies, and once we reach another dead end, fill up the hero gauge. When the third chaos control ends, we will be right next to another dead end. Defeat the enemies as quickly as possible, and then chaos control one last time. There should be just enough time to make it to Black Doom. And finally, Devil Doom. We don't have any weapons or vehicles to use, so we fight him as we normally would. Well, that was anticlimactic. So with that, the challenge is finally done. 
Now, at the beginning of the video, I said the goal was to complete all 10 endings and defeat the true final boss. Can we do that? Well, yes, but actually no. Here's a new version of the level select screen I've made. Yes, I know, it looks very professional looking. Let me clarify, this does not show all the missions we completed, rather it shows all of the available routes we can take. For instance, although we can complete the dark mission of Central City, we have no actual way of reaching this level, since we can only access it once we complete the dark mission of Cryptic Castle, which we cannot do. Likewise, both missions of Gun Fortress can be done, but since we're unable to finish the dark mission of both the Ark and Air Fleet, we have no means of getting to this level either, meaning we can't unlock two of the endings. Additionally, there is no way we can get through Black Comet, period. So that's another two endings. So while we are technically able to beat the 10 final bosses in Devil Doom, we unfortunately don't have the ability to unlock all of the endings. But hey, we can still complete six of them, which honestly, I'm pretty pleased with. Out of every mission in the game, there is only 14 we can't complete. Lethal Highway's Hero Mission, all three missions of Cryptic Castle, Central City's Hero Mission, Sky Troops' Dark Mission, both missions from the Ark, Airfleet's Dark Mission, Iron Jungle's Hero Mission, both from Lost Impact, and both from Black Comet. That means 57 out of the 71 missions, and also the entire last story, can be beaten without weapons and vehicles, which is 80% of the game. Sea Shadow, the ultimate lifeform doesn't need all that junk, you did most of that by yourself. And as a little extra land yap, I also looked at all of the game's storylines to see how many we could complete under the challenge's conditions. Out of the 326 paths, only 82 are possible? Wow, I was expecting at least 100, but that's barely 25%. Jeez, okay. And that is the end of the video, so thank you so much for watching. Really, it means a lot to me. I'm thinking about doing some more challenge videos, specifically for Sonic in the future, because I really had a lot of fun doing this one. I have ideas for Sonic Forces, Sonic Freeriders, uh, Sonic 4 Episode 1, even Rise of Lyric, of all things. And before you give me that look, Sonic R has three challenge videos, I don't see why Boom shouldn't have one. Um, yeah, I think that's all I can think of, so thank you again, and have a good day.